Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about long-term issues. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what do you think is the most likely cause uh, to long-term issues within the code base and in the company? Is it incompetence, showing off, laziness, inexperience or management? That is an excellent question. Uh, I would say it is it is a combination of things. It's all of these things. It's uh, I would say I don't want to call it incompetence because it's not really about incompetence per se. It depends. Uh, well, it depends a little bit on what we mean by incompetence. Uh, the sh most surefire way for you to create a long-term problem for your company or for your code base is absolutely that you're incompetent. But uh, at the same time, laziness is a factor. Uh, one thing that I think is hilarious is that uh, every software developer I've ever known, they bitch and whine about legacy problems and issues and so forth, but yet I see them commit code on a daily basis without ever boy scouting any of the code or adding unit tests or like doing any of this sort of stuff that you kind of expect someone who really cares about quality to do and the same person if you ask them to add some unit tests that's a bother or they ask can I do that later because I'm really stressed thinking about this thing here this is what I want to do and that's just plain old laziness and like inexperience yes absolutely and incompetence it's hard to draw a line between incompetence and inexperience because I mean one they they might be different semantically but they kind of they lead to the same sort of thing right you're going to produce bad a bad solution things like that and the same thing goes for management so sure it's it really comes down to like it doesn't really matter if you have like a genius group of people if you have poor management uh, things are still kind of going to go wrong. You can fix it with highly competent software developers, uh, but it's harder. I would uh, You can solve both for both scenarios if you have an incompetent manager or if you have incompetent software developers. Uh, if the one part is very, very good, it's possible to solve, but it's usually harder for a manager to fix like, a shitty software team than it is to for a sh uh, really good software team to carry a shitty manager. Uh, and showing off, sure, uh, that does happen. But I, that's usually I would I see some things as completely negatable, or it's something that can be completely mitigated by experience and security within the workplace. Because showing off is really something that the only time that uh, leads to any serious problems is if the other developers don't care about the code base or they indulge some upstart person who has a lot of big ideas but can't really follow good practices or doesn't really well let's say that they they're a bit of a rock star your rock stars are never a problem as long as you have someone with a little bit of authority and, and seniority uh, making sure that is competent and has experience making sure that yeah that sort of stuff doesn't fly here. Uh, of course, you don't want to go in the opposite direction there and have someone who squashes everybody's ideas. And that's kind of the, that's the balancing act I'm talking about. The balancing act between making a good decision and a bad decision is very hard. It's really, really hard. Because if you have a super senior software developer who has too much authority, they can crush every single idea, even if there are good ones, because after all, they're just a person. And as any person, they have their own favorite tools, their own favorite practices, and might not be so, they might be very conservative. They might not want to test stuff out. And that's where it really comes down to if you want to mitigate and like uh, not make these long term issues happen, uh, you have to adopt. Like, one part of it is definitely that you need to have experienced software developers. But another part of it is that you have to have. A strategy for how to deal with the inevitable fact that you will make poor decisions at certain times and the only rule that I've ever been able to formulate into something concrete that does this really really well is to have 
what I like to say, a development process where you create disposable code. And what I mean by disposable code isn't that it's shitty, I mean that you structure everything you do in such a fashion that the coupling between, like, it's not about loose coupling per se here, it is about disposability. You never should at no point, uh, or you should avoid at the very least as much as possible, to put yourself in a situation where you cannot undo a decision that you just made. That is what you want as much as possible and I'm not talking about like being like super optimized here I'm not talking about some people will say oh if you have a third-party library well then we'll create an adapter around that or some type of uh, wrapper so that we don't have to so we abstract away the fact that we're using I don't know jQuery or something like that so that we can switch it out whenever that's just like yeah sure you can do that but it's basically premature optimization what I'm talking about is that you structure things in such a way that everything is its own module everything is its own isolated piece of the system that's this is sort of I'm not saying microservices but a microservice is a good example of a pattern this is at the network level where this works really well but you can also do it you should do it at the code level as well if you've seen any of my videos on all my thoughts on how to structure like you node know, projects and so forth my first and foremost tip apart from using typescript is going to be to treat everything as a package or like everything as a module it's the same thing you do with npm the npm packages it is its own isolated thing it holds everything it needs to know about itself within itself and everybody else depends on that package it's uh, you can use yarn workspaces or you can use like anything basically as long as you don't break that rule that single thing is everything that is related to this concept because when you do that it's literally the same thing uh, well it's very similar at the very least to what a microservice represents it's just a single unit of the system that is its own building block if that makes sense so its own dependency and this is not a new concept i mean uh, the strongest uh, pattern for this sort of thing is say the kernel they say the linux kernel where you have a single like you have this uh, you have the kernel itself but then you have different modules that you can plug in or plug out as you need this is something that is very good at mitigating the impact of causing long-term issues. What's really bad is to create a situation where you can't get out of the the decision that you made. And that is the thing, and that's why I can't say that it's incompetence or laziness or inexperience or min mismanagement or like what the main cause is, because the, it, it's all of them. You can arrive at these situations in, uh, from many different angles, and that's why I think to get something constructive out of what I'm saying, it's better for you to consider if this is an inevitable, or rather practically inevitable, to never make, like it's, if it's almost impossible to never make a mistake, then it doesn't make sense to try to figure out how to never make a mistake. It's better to have the approach, okay, how do I mitigate the problems that are caused by the mistake? An example that I think, uh, an, or a very good example of this philosophy put into practice is how Google runs their data centers. So was it, I think it was, or maybe it was Amazon, I don't remember, maybe they're doing it the same way, where they accept the fact that their hardware is going to fail. So they don't spend a lot of time trying to necessarily invest into the best hardware across the entire data center they create a process for how to redistribute load across the hardware if something goes wrong the process of plugging like taking out a motherboard or a hard drive or whatever might have failed is like that you just do it you just unplug it plug it back in and pay the cost of doing that so that you meet so you reduce the cost of a problem occurring to the lowest possible um, uh, level. That is exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying that that is the best thing for you to do, uh, to, to do your development in general. And I believe that the easiest way to get to that state is through, as I said, writing disposable code. Uh, if you can achieve that, uh, a lot of the other issues are gonna go away. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, the thing that usually causes long-term issues within a code base or any project is uh, it's a combination of 
everything you can have very opinionated uh, philosophers, software developers who fuck up the code base by doing this exact thing, like they create a lot of sophisticated solution, no, so sophisticated solutions nobody understands. And if they break, as I said, this rule of um, isolating their code or loose coupling, etc., etc., call it what you want, uh, all of a sudden uh, you find yourself uh, maintaining a very large piece of legacy because they're sim it's simply too expensive for you to rewrite it. For too much of the system is depending on it. And when that thing reaches critical mass, you're never going to get rid of it. Showing off is usually not an issue if uh, like it, because it's kind of the same thing as being incompetent, in my opinion. Because showing off only really works if they, you are allowed to show off or nobody else understands that you are showing off or creating bad decisions and that's why inexperience goes hand in hand in my opinion but, uh, with incompetence because it leads to the same thing you are making bad technical decisions and the only way to not make bad technical decisions is unfortunately to make really shitty ones for the longest time or listen to very experienced people until you start getting it right and I like to say that every single company uh, pays for the training of their staff in legacy code and that's why I argue that it's that's why the value of a true senior software developer is it's almost in, immeasurable uh, even if you can get five junior developers at a fraction of the cost of a real senior and I'm not talking about someone who knows how to write code for and has done that for 10 years I'm talking about someone who makes really good decisions uh, the difference between these people are like you cannot measure the value and lastly, management, sure, it, a lot of long-term bad issues are going to come from management. But honestly, I find that it's less problems with management. It does happen because sometimes they give you a task where you cannot make a nice solution and that's shitty. But in many cases, if you have the right talents, uh, a good team can carry a bad manager uh, on average. But of course, management is also a factor. Have a great day.